Let's talk about the five top health tips of all time. Someone suggested doing this on one of my YouTube videos. So I sat down and really took a look at what would be the most important tips that you should focus on. To do that, I had to first look at the top worst tips of all time, okay, which are some of these right here, then to come up with the best tips. It's just a good way to figure things out by looking at the opposite side. The problem that most people are running into is that they're, they Google stuff and they're trying to find the best tips, but what they're going to get is either the worst tips or trivial things. So what I want to focus on is the most vital things to produce the most health. But mainstream talks about doing low fat, low salt, drinking lots of water, gallons of water. Now, there's nothing wrong with drinking enough water, but it, you could actually overdo it, especially if you're low on salt, because you're diluting your electrolytes if you're drinking gallons of water. Um, now, lean proteins, people are brainwashed to think that that's better than fattier proteins, but here's the thing. Lean proteins will stimulate the hormone insulin, okay? Which, by the way, this is the number one tip most of you already know this, but for those of you that don't, keeping your insulin levels normal is probably the best health advice you can give someone because that's going to result in preventing so many health problems from inflammation to a fatty liver to metabolic syndrome to blood pressure to decreasing your risk of getting cancer and the list goes on and on and on. To do that, you need to lower your carb consume fattier proteins because leaner proteins on the insulin index will stimulate insulin more than fattier proteins. And that also includes consuming an egg in its whole form versus just the egg white. Now, vegetable oils, as in soy oil, corn oil, canola, cottonseed, are highly inflammatory, and those could actually trigger insulin resistance. So when you were taught that you had to replace saturated fats with vegetable oils, that is the worst advice that you were given, okay? So we want to get rid of the vegetable oils and use more saturated oils, coconut oil, uh, fat from butter, things like that. All right, next one is lose weight and get healthy. Now, if you look up pretty much any health condition, regardless of what it is, like heart disease, whatever, they're going to tell you, you need to lose weight. You need to lose weight because obesity is a risk factor. Well, number three, this is better advice. Get healthy to lose weight first, okay? Not lose weight to get healthy. This right here might sound really kind of simple and almost like idiotically obvious, but it's very, very powerful. Because instead of focusing on your weight, you just focus on getting healthy. And guess what? You will lose the weight as a byproduct, but you also have a lot of other great things as well. Those people that are just so focused on weight loss, choosing the wrong program that actually makes them unhealthy, especially if they've been given the bad advice of lowering your calories, okay? Because this is, this is what they'll say right here. Every diet works as long as you keep your calories low. How many times have you ever heard this? Very bad advice. When you restrict calories, you slow the metabolism, and you also cut nutrients too. If you get in a healthy eating plan, you increase your nutrients, and you change your fuel to the right type of fuel, and you lose weight in a healthy way, and you look better. Next one on the bad advice, six small meals per day to prevent overeating, okay? Which is the worst advice, because every time you eat, you trigger insulin. So fasting is number two. Very, very important. Intermittent fasting. You need to skip your breakfast. Now, I used to be the guy that would recommend consuming a breakfast. Well, I found out that was bad information. So I changed it in my book. You don't want to consume breakfast simply because you want to increase your time of fasting. It's going to really help you shift your metabolism into burning your own fat and you're gonna be extremely healthy if you do that. And so instead of lowering your calories, decrease the frequency of eating. And this one right here, which is at the top of the list, you need to stop snacking. Why? Because every time you snack, you stimulate insulin. 
So these two can be pretty much combined, but I wanted to separate them. All right, exercise, well, no, that's a good thing. It's really good, but that would probably be down here at number six as far as a health tip. All right, reduce your added sugars. Now, this is always interesting. They tell you to reduce your added sugars to like six teaspoons of sugar per day. Well, that's still going to be way too high to get into ketosis because you're still going to increase insulin. So why don't they just tell you to get rid of all the sugars? So again, it's it's advice, but it's not the best advice in the world. All right, eat your breakfast. We already discussed that. How about this one? There is no bad foods. You just have to eat variety of foods. Foods will give you fuel. This right here is probably created by the food, the junk food industry. It is very bad advice because there are bad foods. Okay, there are junk foods that will give you some temporary fuel, but it's gonna jack your insulin and create all sorts of problems. So there is zero benefit in consuming certain foods. And that relates to this next one a little bit. Everything in moderation. In order to get into ketosis, to get your body to burn the right fuel, which is fat, you have to bring the insulin down. To do that, you have to bring your carbs down on the low end, okay? so. If everything's in moderation, you'll never get there. You want low carb, moderate protein, so we can do moderate protein, but higher amounts of fat. Okay, that's the ratios that you need. Not everything in moderation. So they're basically allowing you to have everything in moderation, junk food, sugar, alcohol, and you never really get anywhere with your health. In order to get healthy, you can't have certain things in moderation. You must have them very, very low. All right, next one is no one diet is for everyone. Each person is different. What works for some people might not work for someone else. And so that leaves you in a confused state where you're trying diet after diet after diet. You keep trying until one day maybe you'll find the right diet. Well, I disagree with this one right here because our bodies are very similar in certain things, especially our hormones, especially insulin. Any diet that helps you lower insulin will help you. Any diet that helps you lower insulin will increase your health. The diets that lower it more are going to produce more benefit. Those diets that raise insulin are not good diets. And so if you understand the back end of how fats burn and what hormones do what, then you can actually predict what diet is going to be good or bad. Okay, so we already talked about this, and we talked about that. So number four, when you do a keto plan, which is low carb, you want to do it healthily. And what I mean by that is you want to increase two things, the quality of your ingredients. You want to do organic, well-caught, grass-fed. You also want to consume foods that are high in nutrients that satisfy your nutrient requirement. And so by doing both of those, that is called healthy. Okay, so healthy keto, and keto is about getting your body to burn ketones, which is the byproduct of fat. So this is number four, very good advice. And number five, and number five, we can include the exercise and sleep for all sorts of benefits, as well as reducing your stress. Okay, so that would be number five. And so when I really looked at everything, these are the top five. I couldn't think of anything that was higher in the list. If you could think of something that's better than these five, please put them in the comment section below. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you wanna know how to begin keto, or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the US. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call but I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.